Yeah. That's what I want. Hey, yeah, really yeah. Can I get you the biscuits? Hey, protect your little lives. Can I get you the biscuits? But no, I was talking to somebody today who's doing the keto diet, and she was saying that you eat bread and carbs or whatever, like your body, your body eats, um, it doesn't feed on your fat. Like it doesn't feed on the fat, it feeds on the fat. So when you do like fasting, you know that, you train your body to kind of eat fat. Or something like that. Anyway, okay. Your body eats with fat when you train, when you feed your fat. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ready, bro? We on? We yep. on? Check, check. You press the cord already? Yeah, my joint. Did you press it? Or did you press it? Peace, peace, peace. What's happening, everybody? I'm J-Rod And I'm G. You're now tuned in to the Poor Life Podcast, hosted by none other than Nuance. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, man. I want to uh, shout out everybody that's supporting us so far. Yeah, man. The Poor Life, Poor Life Academy. Probably Cancel Poetry. Oh, platforms, Nuance. Nuance. Uh, what else, man? We got a lot going on. Like on J-Rod <laughs> G. Happy Solomon. Solomon. Savage. Savage. Uh, who is it? Hold on. Sophia. Sophia. We got yeah. books, by the way. He's got to have it. Have the Who? Oh! But we're not by ourselves this evening, are we? We're not? We're not. <laughs> who y'all with us tonight? Man! <laughs> you go, I get to do this? You get to be honest. Thank you, brother. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, if you haven't noticed to j D's left, my right, center stage is a wonderful, brilliant, beautiful, intelligent poet. Poor poet, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh to my me? goodness, thank you. Yeah, I'm JL, I'm going by JL Speaks, and I am a writer, mm. and I write my truth, mm. hoping to influence other people to write their truths. I'm so honored to be here with you all. Thank That's you for having me. Appreciate you in the house. Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, 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 uh, tonight's topic, you know, we were discussing not too long ago, uh, things we wanted to discuss with you in particular because right. you are a special talent, unlike, um, you know, posts that we normally speak to. Not that they're not special talents, but right. I think it's, 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 um, different. They're all special. Tomorrow. It's kind of like, uh, <laughs> you matter. I can't. I can't think of the word I'm trying to think. All of. poets matter. Jay. It's like houses, right? The house of, the oh, house right. of, the house of. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You can see where I'm going with it. Right? Okay. Gotcha. You represent a certain house, not all, not specifically, okay. because you're not tied down to that house. Mm-hmm. But for our conversation today, we want to speak about that house. Yeah, right. that, that space that I take up. Yeah, space. Yeah. 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 space. It's the right. space that I take up. Take out yeah. the the walls. The space. Yeah. There we go. And yeah. For the people listening now who aren't in the area, who may not know of the DMV or of JL Speaks, she is the 2018. How do you put it? Beltway Grand Slam Poetry Slam champion. Yeah. Beltway yeah. championate. Yeah. You know? <laughs> What's that cover? Yeah, so a little bit about Beltway is essentially you go through about 10 rounds of competitions and it's a virgin crowd, different crowd every time because the venue just invites people in. Right. They select about four people, four to five people to be judges and they vote on your poetry. Um, and based off those votes, you accumulate a certain amount of points and then at the end you get to represent or hold the title of bragging rights to, as the Beltway Grand Slam poetry champion okay so things that that kind of entails or has entailed for people in the past is it's allowed them to then go to regional and national competitions with that um title but also having it like expenses paid by the city so that's been a great thing um with Beltway poetry mm-hmm. and you're exposed to like other writers that you wouldn't normally meet mm-hmm. like right, your right. lyrics or your ashley stewart's right yeah. um I've definitely thought it was a great thing. And of course, there's conflict with it because people are like, how do you feel about people voting on your art? Like, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And people mm-hmm. don't necessarily choose to take up that space because of that reasoning. Gotcha. Um, but I guess I'm one of those people, like, I believe if you have good art and a good, I don't know, a good truth, a good vibe to what you're saying, mm-hmm. people going to feel that. People right. feel truth regardless of what form it's in. Um, but yeah. Wow. Okay. And okay. that platform, just being this, um, the champion, 
Yeah. Drew, what was that? Uh, Bus Boys and Poets, right? Right. So it's put you in like a different, you know, level, so to speak, right? Yeah. You, how long have you been doing this? Like it? So I shared my first poetry piece in 2016 in October at church. Mm -hmm. gotcha. <laughs> so if we're saying like how long have I been performing poetry, then yeah. But I mean, I've been like playing with words and rapping. Like I am a, you know, beat on the table rapper. Uh -huh. Since like middle school. Okay, actually, okay. <laughs> And then I advanced to beat on the backseat of the bus nice. in high school. Yeah. And people be like, oh, Jay, about the freestyle. Mm. Never knew it was going to turn into like the poetry and the more like Mayas and Mason Hughes and Lawrence Dunbar type right. of styles. Yeah, cause, I had no idea. Like, your, your words and your art has allowed you, you know, to be in front of like some predominant characters of this poetry world, right? So, yeah. yeah. Would you like to speak on that, like some of the platforms you've been able to Yeah, touch? Yeah, so being able to be um, the Grand Slam champion, and honestly had no idea what that entails. Mm -hmm. So even for people who listen in, like if you're sitting there with a talent and you don't really know, I think the best thing to do is really just jump. Like standing on the ledge contemplating it's just not going to work. So I jumped into this new round where I'm like learning, like, oh, if I say this, people won't understand it or you know, making strategic decisions about what I'm saying and how I'm saying it because it's based off the crowd, right? You have to have that ability to walk in the room and catch a vibe from the crowd. Hmm. Like, if not immediately, because sometimes you may be the first person, right? Gotcha. And these are people who aren't specialists in poetry or whatnot, so they don't know the dealings with it. But once I got the platform, I was like, I want to take up as much space with this platform as possible. So that's allowed me to kind of book deals and contracts with busboys and poets mm -hmm. so that anytime they have somebody come they're going to be like oh jl can you either do your poetry or write a poem specifically for this person this is what they're going to come and speak on so to your point it's allowed me to meet the angela davises mm -hmm. and perform for her and have angela davis you know who's still mm -hmm. seen as a very prominent activist right now hug you and, and cry and like oh my gosh this was beautiful mm -hmm. Your writers such as like Sonia Sanchez, like yeah. people don't even know who that is, right? Well, they don't know. They only see her and they think Def Jam poetry. And when she's like, "My pussy head," you know, yeah, like yeah. that's kind of sorry, excuse my language, but that's kind of like what you know her for. Not knowing that she gives um, scholarships out or grants out for a hundred thousand dollars for writers who write in two poems, right. two three poems. You know what I'm saying? So um, meeting her, meeting Alice Walker. When right. you think of for the color purple. Everybody knows for the color purple. Nobody knows really the Alice Walker. So I think being able to meet people like that and, and also in the different venues, mm -hmm. right? Like the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. the African American like Smithsonian and Oprah Winfrey's theater. I never once in my life was like, that's where I'm about to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm thinking I'm still writing and I'm looking at your Elizabeth the CB dolls, you know, and you're like Paige's Matani, you're like, what the hell? Like how can I write like that? Mm -hmm. And my writing's not like that. But I I truly feel like, I don't know, God just be like, nope, you're ready. Here yeah, you go. Yeah. And just get it together. So, got you. Dope. It's great. Dope. So, how's it feel being in that space? Because uh, you speak of, like, just, okay, so you're a champion at controlling the crowd, like, have, holding attention. Yeah. What's that like, right? Mm. From open mic setting, yeah. where it's, it's kind of like, okay. Good job. Yeah. yeah. You actually get judged and, and awarded, rewarded, you know, for, for that. Like yeah. what's the what's your mindset there? Because you gotta be a whole different, you know what I'm saying, a whole different and when the game is like competition mode is like, nah, I gotta be like like what's that like? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think I don't I try not to let that really get to me. Mm -hmm. And I've had that like really get to me in the past. I had a, a bout or a round with the slam where I didn't even place. Mm -hmm. And this is like you know, for me, I'm like, nah, my poem was good. As yeah, yeah. You know, you're like, my poem was good. And that um, people were like, I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, to have somebody who don't know nothing about poetry probably, never seen it, um, come and judge my poetry and be like, oh, she don't even deserve enough mm -hmm. points to place, yeah. really can put you in a space where you start to look at your poetry from the lens of other people. Right. And that's when you're in danger zone. I think... For me, when I get on stage and I stand there and I'm like, look, 
I'm about to do this poem. I'm about to put the feel. I'm about to put X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, if it's a lot of older people in the crowd or people who I feel like, oh, they, they want to get a laugh or they want to get X, Y, and Z, I'll try to right. um, tweak my performance or how, I, how I'm performing to mm -hmm. cater to that. But other than that, it's still going to be the, the same content. So I think being in the spotlight is not, I don't know. Being in the spotlight, I've learned to not pay as much attention to the audience mm. as you would think. Mm. Like, pay attention to them, yes, when I'm off stage, yeah, but when I'm on stage in the spotlight and people are like, oh, Jay, go, go, I'm going to go. Yeah. And I can't really worry. About, like, it, for those who don't get it, they was going to get it when I wrote it. Right. You know? And for yeah, those yeah, who yeah. wasn't going to get it, they wasn't going to get it. That's good. That's good. Well, yeah, that was that. Speaking of, like, just being in that spotlight, you've been able to take it from the, you know, open mic cafes and shops and all that to the corporate door to be able to be, you know, in certain platforms that don't necessarily welcome or seem to welcome, you know, poetry. Mm. And mm. as we see a transition moving forward, like poetry starting to really like come to its own, like we was talking uh, a while ago about the genre of mm. poetry, you know? So how does that translate, you know, as far as like your art and your mm what you're saying, because yeah, I know you mentioned just now, like if you see like there's certain people in the audience who may want to laugh, or you have like elderly people or like older, you know, yeah. the older generation in the crowd, let's take it to from, you know, different areas. So you may see like from the church to the open mic pits to, you know, your meeting rooms. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, yeah. What do you feel like translates in those, at, in those areas and what doesn't, you know? So what I've learned to do when I'm in a corporate setting and I have to do some poetry, you have to break it down. They they have no idea about poetry. There are some people who literally are like, oh, I learned you know poetry in middle school. Yeah. Or still I rise. That's the only Robert Frost, Edgar Allan Poe. Right. That's all they know about poetry. And I feel like the industry of poetry originally started in academia. You're welcome. I will say that. Like mm -hmm. that's that's the roots of poetry. That's how most people are introduced to it. Now, I feel like the industry is changing to become more art and performance based. Okay. I, I would definitely, well, I, I don't, yeah, no, art and performance based. Mm. And the issue with that is that most people feel like because you can't put it in a structure, uh -huh. they can't necessarily receive it, right? Mm. Like, you know, a haiku, five, seven, five, like right. that's a structure. They like haikus, but when it's more like free verse poetry and mm -hmm. saying what you want to say, you have to break it down. So I always start all my performances off at work, letting them know like, hey, I'm gonna share a piece of my truth. I'm gonna, we're gonna worship together. Mm -hmm. This is my form of healing, my type of writing. Mm -hmm. If you like it, what we do in the poetry community, we snap, you know, you can also do your tongue at the top of your mouth. Give me a mm, chocolate at the top of your mouth, which we like to say in the Bus Boys community. You can do a silent clap, like you have to break it down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say some, some hard things. I'm gonna say some, See things, but I'm also going to say something in which way you can receive it. What I learned about the translation is in an open mic, you can literally be like, you can be a lot more emotionally expressive mm -hmm. than in a corporate setting. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes in a corporate setting, your emotions will cloud the message. And what I want to never do is make sure, it, is, is like never allow the message to not be heard, right? Okay. I look at my poetry and my gift as like, I'm here to serve a job. I'm yeah. here to tell these people what they need at this particular time and open their perspective. Gotcha. I think when I'm in open mics, it's more so like me venting a little bit. Okay. Okay. More than when I go into a corporate space, I'm like, hey, these, you know, corporations these are where I work. No, not even bullet points, but where I work, for instance, somebody may say, oh, you know, keep our clients in mind, right? They're government workers and employees. But I'm the type of, I'm gonna write a poem about, you know, keeping each other in mind because some of us have family mm -hmm. that is affected by the shutdown, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And also just that new level of understanding. Mm -hmm. Like the people for the first time are walking into the unemployment office and what that looks like, you know, for them. Can you imagine what that looks like for them? Like people who never imagined it. So just making sure I kind of translate yeah. Between that. It's have you ever, uh, you ever experimented with like, let's say you just do a poem first and then maybe talk about it at the end? I mean, or is it kind of like you always go in the beginning, I'm going to give them the, uh, the disclaimer first before you go to the poem? Or is it... So the disclaimer is all about how they should react uh -huh. or 
engaged. Okay. It's never about this is what my poem is gotcha, about gotcha, gotcha, and then gotcha. I'm about to do it. Gotcha. Like nah, I'm not giving hand like that. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> No, I feel yes. like it's a dynamic world and they have to kind of adapt to how you want to express yourself. We're, we live in a time where people want to express themselves. You want to be on social media mm -hmm. and companies and corporations, they feed off what? Surveys and feedback. They want to hear how they're doing. Yeah. And the reason why a lot of these corporations are not hearing that is because people are not telling their truth. Mm -hmm. They're not being honest about their experiences, whatever art form they take up. Right. Um, and that's really hindering people to keep that talent. So when you have people like myself or other people in the firm who, or in corporate America, mm -hmm. who are open to expressing like, hey, you know, you can't touch my hair in a corporate setting, but making it in a poem. Like when you touch my hair, you, it's like you touching something in a museum. It's like walking in a zoo and touching the animals. Mm -hmm. And there's no sign, like mm -hmm. the violation. Yeah. So, yeah. I would say that's how it, it translates. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, do you feel like, you know, poetry, and this is just for us at the okay. table too, yeah. like, how do y'all feel like it's about poetry being a universal language? Do you feel like it's often, mm. you know, it's easier to understand, or is it misinterpreted a lot often in other things like music or movies and art, you know? Hmm, universal language, um... I used to think that because I was like, hey, it's a lot of people that, you know, write. If, if you were to ask people if they write, they'll say, yeah, I write. I have a journal or I have a diary or something like yeah. that. I may write a little poem down again. Um, that's why I would say, yeah. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean everybody's a poet, you know what I mean? But it's like poetry. Mm, what does that mean, though? Everybody's so, not a poet. It, it, it depends on how you describe it. What makes you a poet? So if, if we're talking about what we do right now, we're speaking about the actual, uh, now different obligations and responsibilities of a poet. Okay. So I, I guess I'll speak of a certain responsibility within the definition of a poet. So okay. You know what I mean? It's not not uh, declassifying them as not being poet, more so saying it's, it's, it's spaces within poetry, within the title of being a poet gotcha. that we got to go. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for example, performing uh, professionally, okay. uh, performing occasionally, um, journaling, silently, secretly, um, these are all different acts of being a poet. You know what I'm saying? You can be a poet to yourself, you can be a singer in the shower. You know what I mean? But I think what we're talking about now, what I'm speaking of is just actual performance. Um, mm -hmm. Delivery, the actual, you know, um, the work of poetry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you speak of the language of the words, I would say, yeah, because I think we all use the words. We all speak um, poetically when we talk to a lover or um, uh, passionately when we're upset. Um, I think we do use words, we do use, I think it's more poetic than we give credit for. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. that's what I was yeah. I would say it's universal if you consider universal language to mean that everybody has their own language. Because okay. even now, we all mm -hmm. do poetry, but mm -hmm. we have our own language mm -hmm. of what we consider poetry to be and mm -hmm. how we communicate po poetry. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I don't know, when you look at certain writers, um, Zora Neale Hurston, like she created like a language, right? Yeah, she was like, I'm going to write in broken English. Yeah. This is my language. This is me mm -hmm. expressing myself, right? So mm -hmm. if you look at it like that, then yeah, we all are poets. It's just as fluent as speaking, in my mm -hmm. personal opinion. I just don't think we all perform. Yeah, or share, exactly, exactly. Right? But then, I don't know. Would you say, and I, this is not my interview, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> would you, right, right, right. right. So would you say then that um, performing poets, poetry is better than, no. than right? Okay. No, I, I was about to say, because I'm like, I've heard some poetry and I'm just, I wasn't moved. The people who can dunk, you know? the people who can shoot, you know what I mean? Like, that don't make them better because you can dunk and I can't. Yeah. So and I feel like some, it depends on the vibe of you too, yeah. right? Because if, like I say a poem, sometimes I catch myself if it's a poem that I've said so many times. Mm -hmm. And by the, like the fifth time I'm saying it, it's not as much emotion or as dramatic right, or me yeah. putting myself in that space right, again. Right, right. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of times writers, and this may be veering, but performing poets kind of veer into the, like, I need to find that raw space again in order to do X, Y, and Z. Right. And I think they kind of cap or limit themselves in their ability to advance in that poetry when they're like, I can only write good poetry from yeah. this space. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that, that reminds me of the conversation we had before, like, yeah. 
do we find ourselves staying in a certain lane or a certain discussion topic when it comes to poetry? You know what I'm right, saying? Right, yeah. right. Do we always talk about this one thing right here? Or do we open it up and we say, you know, express how we've seen, we've seen uh, both sides of it? Yeah. Like versatility and we've seen like people who are very consistent with their one own thing. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think we're rappers too, like for, for instance, Future. Future. Is going to talk that talk until <laughs> we die. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got guys like Cole that switch it up and have different cadences, different styles, different. I don't want to say cadence because you got to cadence and melodies too, but different, uh, different content, different subjects, different, different uh, ways to hit you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to stay ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. and I think that's how poetry is going to evolve mm-hmm. when the writers are actively, and I hate to say it because it's something I hate doing, but reading and writing, like. And and literally reading, you have to know what's going on in the world yeah. in order for what you what your what your poetry is yeah. to like reform or influence or change people's mind. Right. Like if you always talk about love and your heartbeat, everybody knows about you know you refer to love naturally with a heartbeat, right? Or if you talk about something that's wet and it's always about the ocean, you know. But I would say a, a great person who does really good at this is Rudy Francisco. Mm. He has this ability to. Take metaphors and then you go into a whole direction you never thought. Shout one out to Rudy poem, Francisco. Shout out to Rudy Francisco. Um, one poem I would say is that he talks about how we're all like battling about gun violence and okay. how to make guns illegal and ammo and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, well, you think he, that's what he's talking about. Okay. But then in the end of the poem, he's actually talking about plastic straws. Like mm-hmm. he's like, plastic straws, you know, what plastic yeah. straws are illegal yeah. now. What, what, huh? Yeah. He, he, Plastic straws are illegal now? Yeah, in Why? certain states. Why? It's about to be like, it's nation, like, like nationwide. Like they, want, they, want, they want to get out Pla- of the Now they want paper, yeah. paper straws. Paper, paper. Paper straws. If you're in certain states and you get caught with plastic straws, you will get fined. But why the plastic straw like is illegal? Why the environment. Illegal? They're saying you know it's, a, it's an environmentalist thing. It's the new trend that's sweeping. Right. <laughs> and he was like these things. Like he's talking about them like their guns or like something. I said you're like oh yeah he's definitely talking about guns or whatever. That's the big topic. And he starts talking about <laughs> the plastic straws. Plastic straws. It, it everybody was, you was, up, yeah. threw everybody for a loop. But in that moment, you just learn something new. If you're not you know in the news like that, you just felt a new emotion mm-hmm. towards something like yeah, why yeah. are we focusing on something so <laughs> yeah, yeah. in your mind you know yeah. small it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. and then literally he took you through two different you know two different spaces mm-hmm. like he educated you mm-hmm. so it I don't makes know, you in an want way. to like look up things one it makes you yeah. want to look up what's going on like you said in the world and two yeah. it makes you as a writer want to look up different ways to write now yeah. because now you're intrigued for yeah. me that's what if i'm just in the audience yeah. and i'm listening to something like that yeah it blows my mind because yeah. like we are, we know who we friends with is we yeah. francisco excuse me uh, we know who he is we know like the platform yeah. of you know fibology and all yeah. those guys just like yeah. dude if you could just be studious in your art and just sit there and one before you practice learn mm-hmm. be a pupil first mm-hmm. you know the you know the student can't outweigh or overwhelm the master yeah, or yeah. something like that right yeah, yeah so it's like always be studious always be one because then you, you can get that wisdom of the master or master certain crabs mm-hmm. and then share that to the next person like mm-hmm. so there's no crabs in the barrel type mindset mm-hmm. when you're a poet or when you're an artist so to speak because you should always want to leave something for somebody else to latch on to so that they can just kind of develop their lane yeah. Yeah. and not take over. Because there, there would be poets and people would be like, oh, I heard him do that. I'm about to do that. You do that and same they, thing. And they're going to do it. And they're going to do it. And that's the thing, too. <laughs> I mean, in, in the game of poetry, like like the analogy about love and the heart, right? Like, yeah. Some people would be like, oh, this person stole this. No, that's just some, it's, it's a common, common, it's so common. Yeah. And when you hear people talk about certain things from a different level or a different dynamic, like, your, your, your mind is blown. But I also believe you have to be a student and a teacher at the same time. Right. And I'm definitely an advocate of putting yourself, man, this cat's cute. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, okay. But I also, it's about experiences, uh-huh. making the moment matter, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, I also feel like you can learn by um, from being under apprentices, like right. having somebody who is actively doing it. And I think that's really helped me too. 
That's how, that's how we opened up the show. It's more mentorship, man. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's yeah. Just, who are you pouring into? Who is Nuance pouring into? Pouring right, into man. That's a good question. You know? You pour into our communities. Like, you being in education, mm-hmm. you taking a bit more counseling role yeah. of education, we pour into that way. And then I think I would also say that poetry is a universal language because mm-hmm. it allows you to expand your poetry in those different realms mm-hmm. of your profession, of the relationships yeah. that you have with your family, friends, and loved ones, of just people that you speak to along the way as you're walking by or just sharing the space with them. Yeah. You know? It's mm-hmm. testimonial, mm-hmm. almost. You it know is. what I mean? <laughs> like, you have to understand that, and there's no level that you're not a poet. If you decide to write, whether it be journal or whether it be for something mainstream you're a poet mm-hmm. yeah. it's your testimony it's something it's your story yeah and I, you can't tell anybody else's story right, right yeah. like the best story you can tell is it's your yours, story yeah. i can't write for like latino women mm-hmm. i can't write for you know L- lgb community i can't yeah. write about that mm-hmm. but i can write about be- me being a black woman you know from atlanta first gener- like i can write about those experiences right, right. like how it felt being the youngest of my family mm-hmm. and the most achieved but none of my family could never attend any of my award shows you know like mm-hmm. that kind of feeling of getting straight A's but nobody there to kind of hand you an award mm-hmm. like certain things about I can write about <laughs> almost losing my life a little bit with certain instances that I was just being way more of a risk taker mm-hmm. so I think you got to take the risk you got to make people kind of come to you a little bit yeah. with your language yeah for sure like in corporate America they know I'm going to say, like, what needs to be. I don't know. They know I'm going to say what I feel. Like, truly what I feel. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it in a way in which you can't use emotion or can't use certain things like that as an excuse to not understand what's blatantly true. How long have you been performing, like, in corporate settings and stuff? I would say um, a year. Okay. Yeah, last February. So... The one corporation that I worked for, they had a talent show Mm -hmm. and had everybody come out, right? And I ended up closing the show Mm -hmm. and they had like the partners of the firm kind of like judge, like, oh, we're going to do a judge. We're going to have like a crowd winner, but we're also going to select like a winner. So you have people playing the ukulele, you got a full band, you know, they playing mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder, you know, <laughs> Super Fishing in the Way. I mean, yeah. I mean, no, they was playing, you know, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, yeah. I, re- I remember vividly because I was just like, I'm about to go up here mm-hmm. and do this poetry. And there was another um, black girl who went before me and she did like an African dance and song. She was like a songwriter. But you could tell the crowd was just, they, really they wasn't it. ready. They wasn't I don't ready. think they was ready. And I'm not even, I don't want to say they wasn't into it. Because I just don't think they, well, Wakanda? they didn't understand what was going on. This is before Black Panther, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so like <laughs> yeah, they yeah. literally have, yeah, that's they have no idea. So then I go on, I'm like, you know what, bump it. I have written, probably the week before I wrote a poem, that I was like, this is a corporate poem. Like in my mind, I was like, this is the one I should say. This is safe. But when I got there, I was like, I'm about to let y'all hear this. Bro. You be gassy or stuff? What is it? It's a corporate poem? It's a corporate poem? What is it? No, no. Oh, that's what you, oh, you say me. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. wait, what are you about to pull up? Nah, I don't <laughs> No, but um, I was like, you know what? I'm just about to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to adapt that mentality of, like, forget it. Yeah, yeah. Like, no. Yeah, this is your talent. It's been confirmed. You done been yeah. to church at the church, open mic at the open mic, yeah, yeah. poetry slam at the poetry slam. Oh. And people, everybody come up to you, you know, they're like, oh my, you have a gift. You have a talent. It's different for somebody to be like, that was a good that was performance, good. Da, 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 versus that people coming to you. Yeah, and being like, this was a gift. Like, I needed to hear that. So then I said it, and from there, um, I would say it built a lot of confidence in the crowd. It was like standing ovation. They had okay, never okay. heard nothing like that. So kind of progressed the bigger stages. And most recently I performed at the Marriott. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the Marriott for over like 1,500 people. Uh-huh. So just talking about diversity and inclusion. So you did win that. Um, yeah, that, 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 oh, my, you did win that. Oh, my yeah, God. yeah. The Got Talent Award, I won that. And... Uh, became an ambassador for the program. So it's essentially like 
How many of your friends do you know who work in corporate America, who have an outside passion mm -hmm. that's in the art, and they're like, you know, I don't want to say miserable, <laughs> miserable, ooh, Lord. Um, they, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say they're miserable, but they feel like they only utilizing a certain amount of themselves, mm -hmm. you know? Like, they at work, you can't be a rapper at work if you're right. here coding mm -hmm. and doing systems engineering, you know? You right. can't. You can't do that. Right. And that's how they feel. So I've realized that my space, when it comes to corporate America, is figuring out how to really influence people to take that extra step mm -hmm. in the arts or in being themselves. Like, okay. bringing your passions to work. That's right? crazy how you, your gift has opened a whole new lane for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lane. That's that tight. Yeah, because I had to think about it. Why do I do poetry? Mm -hmm. I do poetry, one, for myself, yeah. to really like therapy and release. Mm -hmm. I do poetry, two, to say what I feel is needed in a crowd. Mm -hmm. So it's like a healing or revealance for other people. But three, I share my truth, hoping that they will share theirs too, right? Yeah, so right. the the power of influence is really to train people and develop them to the point where they feel like I'm about to be myself uh -huh. regardless of where it is. So, That's dope. That's you have to right. change your, your brand with it. <laughs> And as a fan, you know, the leader of the fan club, it's just membership. Now nah, it's just really refreshing. <laughs> they might get, you know. <laughs> no, nah, it's just refreshing to see, like you know, in different realms, mm -hmm. what poetry can do to people. Because yeah. there would be times when you're speaking mm -hmm. and you're just yeah. you're performing, and I'm watching the room. You know, I'm mm -hmm. just looking and I'm listening too mm -hmm. at the feedback. Or how quiet the room gets versus like how other like when she did a talent show before I don't know if it was a talent no it was a talent show at mm -hmm. the uh, at, at the corporate level when they were like open mic yeah it was open mic and mm -hmm. there was like singers and there were like comedians and all that jazz and you can hear people having a sidebar conversation right mm -hmm. you can hear people just you know kind of chiming in or paying attention right. and then go back to whatever it is they were doing but then you hear you speak. And it's just like, mm. nobody's saying anything. Mm. And they're mm. like, either, if they're saying something, they're like, wow. They're giving feedback. Yeah, yeah. They're doing the chocolate at the top of your mouth. They're doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just, it's a safe space to just listen. And it was, I, to me, it looked so yeah. therapeutic for people because it was a different look on their face. It was just a different energy. And it goes from there to, you know, being on the platforms in front of the Angela Davises and then going back to, you know, speaking with the kids that yeah. you uh, that you mentor and all oh, that. Yeah. Just, everything ties in together. And yeah. then even to hear her kids, like the kids that she mentored, mm -hmm. and like I haven't been to like all their practices or nothing mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. But to see them on like a a, a larger stage. stage for them. Studio theater. And say like and just share their art, share their energy. Mm -hmm. Wow. It was breathtaking. Yeah. They pour into me the most. Yeah. The the kids that write in DC scores pour into me the most. They they are they're I mean they have this ability to talk about something and you're like, what the heck? But it's so mm. true and it's so deep. And if you listen to it, you're like, I could even take that and and, and I'm and I'm thinking about a whole nother right. thing as an adult. Yeah. But your perspective as a child and what you're looking at and what you're seeing is crazy a lot of the girls in the program are also like hoorah like mm. you hear a lot of their poetry is about like i'm the toughest like you ain't gonna mm -hmm. do nothing to me and it's mm -hmm. like do you feel like you're in a space where you have to be mm. the toughest right right and you look at corporate america women who suffer from feeling like they have to you know hold everything together for themselves mm -hmm. they struggle with that surrenderance so i'm sorry i just love that yeah, I know, when, that was when just... you said that i, I immediately yeah. was like it's love. electric man yeah it's definitely yeah. magic. Yeah. So, but it's also about the money, too. Shit. I mean, we, we got to talk, talk about that. We got to talk about that. Talk about it. I think, just with like, I I think number, you though. have to. Uh, <laughs> they just tell me who to call. I think you, I think you, a lot of poets right giving out their work and their heart <laughs> for the free. Um, a lot of people free. are doing that. Free. A lot of people are doing that for free. They are. They are open my for the free. You got nothing. You do what you got to do. You still get nothing. For the free. For the free, begging to be like, can I freely get on your open mic? No, my my G, no, I will not. Yeah, I'm not begging you to get on your free open mic that free. is expanding your platform. I'm not doing that. Right. So I've learned that being well, in corporate freely. America, if I'm gonna do my poem, 
Like, y'all gonna have to promise me that you gonna publish it, right? So when you send it out, people know, like, this is a JL Speaks yeah. home. And I need that you to jump. bring that back. Or if yeah, I'm gonna do a little crowd or whatever, that's my time. It took me a certain amount of hours to write this, right. to think of this for this particular space, and then to perform it for you all. you wanted to be for free. And no, it can't be for free. It can't. It can't. You reap what you sow. And I'm a firm believer that God wants me to reap when I sow. When you sow. Before shizzle. When you sow. Period. Period. People be like, are you struggling writer? No, I'm not trying to be. At all. Yeah. But no, free is not like the wave. You know, I remember when we first started out, we were like, you know, hungry in the game mm-hmm. as like as yeah. far as like a, a duo. Yeah. And we were just going everywhere, doing every open mic, just trying to get our name out there. Yeah. And then you. Yeah. the you know, your art made room for you. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, now we gotta talk about these these wages. How what, how much we should we charge this venue, yeah. this person. Yeah. And then going into okay, you know, once oh, once everything's through with, how much should we charge moving forward? Mm-hmm. We've been doing this now. We got books now. Now we got merch. Yeah, yeah. Now we got uh, music that we work on. We're we got a following. We got a following. Yeah, you got so a following. So now we're adding, you know, this to your venue. Yeah, we gonna need to, you know. Yeah, yeah. We gonna need that bag. Yeah. Yeah. The we'll other one. The other week we saw uh, Elizabeth Asavado, and she performed um, at the firm's event. Okay. And, you know, she charged them what you would charge an entertainer. Like, she's an entertainer. Okay, okay. I mean, and shoot. people needed to hear that, and they needed to hear in that so, space. So they can take it seriously. Right? Yeah, we don't need to be selling our stuff for cheap. I feel like. Right. Take it seriously. Like, you about to give them a new language. Mm-hmm. You're teaching them, a, I'm teaching you a new language. Mm-hmm. You can't, it's not free for me to teach you this right. new language. And the thing is, you're also skilled enough to be in that position. It's kind of like, you know what I mean? We are talking about just, just not necessarily levels, but maybe layers would be better. You got okay. um, a poetry and poet and poets. Um, You're in a position where, you know, the person who isn't as um, confident or, or skilled to be speaking as effectively as you do in a different setting, especially this setting right here, they couldn't do you know that right here. Yeah. The average every other month, I may sign up, I may not, can't do that. Gotcha. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like a pro, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's different than the person that just plays on Saturdays, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, can you speak about just, just that, just expectation with that talent? Mm. With, I mean, the, with the discipline too. Discipline, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Going to it. I would say, um, so I went into the slam. Most people go into slam competitions with like 15 poems that they already have written. That they are that's normal. And that's normal. Mm-hmm. And they like, I'm just going to go through the city of the mics and I'm going to win and I'm going to be done. Okay. Um, for me, what I find unique about myself is that for every single slam or bout or round, mm-hmm. I wrote a brand new poem. After, like, following the last, last So you didn't come with, like, preset poems? The only know? preset one I had was my very first poem mm-hmm. and then a poem that I wrote about my brother. Mm-hmm. That was the only preset one. And the one about my brother I wasn't even planning on using. Mm-hmm. It was for the finals, the last round. Mm-hmm. And I remember being there, and they was like, oh, you need three poems for this one. Because I thought we only needed two. And I was like, oh, my score is good for two. Mm-hmm. They was like, oh, no, it's three, three poems. I was panicking. I got up there. I was like, you know, everyone has that family member that's COVID in December, or the winter of December. I remember the words because I was just like. You made up on the spot? Yeah. You freestyled? I, I freestyled and worked it in with the fish. And I was like, <laughs> it's going to go. It's going to go. What happened? It went. And I won. Oh! That was the final. About the finesse game. Strong. I was like, I'm just going to say something. <laughs> and I hope that everybody yeah. is like. The these judges are like, yeah, we all. Because in my mind, I'm like, what does everybody yeah, have? Like, everybody got that family. Jesus? Yeah. yeah. Turn it on. <laughs> no, but that's what I do before the mic. <laughs> typically, every time. Do that drill. Every yeah, time. <laughs> every time. I need, I'm like, God, can you up. connect? Can that's you just up, connect the dots? But I will mm-hmm. say it gets depressive a little bit with that discipline, right? And with that power of influence. 
on other writers, okay. right? Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Because you feel like when you take that stage, right, you can't necessarily like you just got to be very meticulous in how you want to communicate mm-hmm. certain messages, That's right? Yeah. Like I don't want to not tell you the truth because of how this other person in the room might feel mm-hmm. or because I don't know if I want to expose you to that mm-hmm. right now, right? If that's what you need to hear. But it's like finding that like common line. I'm working on this new piece that's called Token. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just about, you know, I don't want to necessarily bash being a token, right? Because mm-hmm. I feel like that's everybody's perspective. Mm-hmm. But it's also talking about how sometimes when somebody else sees you as a token, you kind of find your own worth and start to appreciate your own diamond. Mm-hmm. Because people never talk about the benefits that the person is getting that is a token. Okay. Right? People always be like, this person used me as a token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they used me as a pawn mm-hmm. and wanted to move me and manipulate me. But it's also about exposing some of those moments, too. Like, yeah, but some of you all like it. Like, mm-hmm. you find that appreciation in yourself. Or if I want to, because I work with, like, government and whatnot firms, mm-hmm. being able to say, like, no, I think this presidency stuff is, is stupid. Like, I don't, I don't think it's smart. Right. Like, the activist part about me is like, you know what? Why are we waiting on the white man to say go for the government? Let's just set up our own government. Mm-hmm. You know, activists of the past would be like, you know, we yes, the, the system is down. This mm-hmm. corrupt system is down mm-hmm. and they would be ready. And a part of me wants to say that, but then also knowing the impact to the middle class and the people who are, you know, not getting funded right now. And I said about that, you know, how to play and manipulate those politics. I would say. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you that. Um, yeah. There is like a, a, a political frame towards all this too, being that you are at a certain uh, yeah. height. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of politics. I yeah. mean, you want to say one thing. You want to say like, especially in work experiences, um, uh, a famous poem, which now that I look back on it, I would probably rewrite, is Corporate Slave. Okay. Just like, you know, people talking about, yeah, I'm about to go chill on my yacht. At work, and mm-hmm. you're like, you're a yacht, yes. and then have the nerve to ask you what you doing this weekend, girl? Not on a yacht. Yeah, I'm, a yacht I'm not on a yacht. Like where the yacht at? Yeah. The yeah. fact that you <laughs> asked me, yeah. right? You gotta over exaggerate your activities. Now. <laughs> I'm gonna take a voyage right, to a to the uh, free park, illustrious <laughs> garden, on the free bench, you know, <laughs> and feed the pigeons. Listen to a, so a bit of music on the way there. They don't know that. My iPod. <laughs> Set yeah. the ambiance. Uh, from Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> but you gotta manage those politics. Yeah. I mean, politics are all around us now, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's just that's becoming its own population, so to speak, in that because mm-hmm. it's always something that will be mentioned and especially the fact that our generation and generation after us, they are into technology. So what do yeah. they do? Politicians automatically, whether it be an ad, whether it be like a short uh, commercial or something now mm-hmm. on uh, like YouTube or anything like that. Whether they're, it be you on IG story. Right. On live. They're watching. Just, they're watching, but they're also yeah. like really kind of yeah. making their thumbprint in whatever we have access to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now it's like, how can we also be original? How can we step away from the political when they're like, feeding us these different things are kind of limiting us like the lanes in which we are driving and it's tough mm-hmm. yeah you know so now we got to manage off like okay i don't really want to be a part of this i don't want to speak on that because mm-hmm. that's not even i don't even want to think about it mm-hmm. but now it's all you think about because now in today's time it's affecting a lot of people more yeah. than we imagine but mm-hmm. now that they see no, or a lot of people who didn't really understand like from that corporate level of, of how like poverty looks like or yeah. what ends me looks like yeah. how you gotta su- scratch and survive yeah. how, you know what I'm saying <laughs> it's just it's interesting now yeah. and as writers like it for me I'll speak about myself okay. it just gives yeah. me the energy to be like okay this gotta be talked about mm-hmm. this gotta like the, con- the comparison and contrast story has mm-hmm. to be mentioned and I know how I'm going to do it. I know some. I'm sure somebody else is going to write about it, say something about it, something. Yeah. yeah. But this is what I see. You know, it's just like, and then living in DC, mm-hmm. you see both parties mm-hmm. get on the same train. 
You know, you see the, the poor man and the rich man get on the same train. And now, like, I wonder what the rich man is thinking now. Mm. I wonder what the, the, the employee or the former employee is thinking now. Mm. You know, how does he view money? How does he view his neighbor who may not have it? You know? And then you got to keep it together. It's a humbling experience, yeah. man, just to sit back yeah. and pay attention to it, but also to be a part of it. It's like you're in a prison, too. Mm. I, and I hate, I, I feel like people don't talk about that. When you have a certain level of influence, you a little box. Yeah. I would say you are a, a definitely a lot of big box. Um, and people a say, like, yeah, I'm a lot of big box. So mm-hmm. Some people say you're not, right? You say, you see the Cardi B video and Which one? the, what, what is it? No, the more city girls. Okay. Oh. And yeah. People are like, oh my god, this is Durani no, woman. I, and da, da, da. I didn't see that one. Yet. No one, no one saw that. <laughs> you see that video and whatnot, and it's actually a person who is like, I'm gonna be both, right? I'm gonna go speak to these charities and give money and give clothes and da da da, and do all this in New York, but I'm also gonna shake my booty for mm-hmm. like, cause that's what I want to do. And I think people, I like who people struggle with that. Because other people box you in. they like, I'm not expecting to see... Like, I expect to see Jerry in the church. I'm not expecting to see her in the club sitting on top of the table with the bottle in her hand. And that's probably my favorite thing to do, you know? Who knows? Like, they're not expecting that. It's I'm like expecting rap. Yeah. Like, when, when oh, people just... start singing the rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, you will be singing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You that sing, ain't you are a rapper. That ain't your talent. Like, that ain't like that melody. Like, like, melody, you know? Yeah. That's a song that I want to sing, y'all. Somebody, somebody got to be the, Indian, the first Indian over the hill. Man. What I say to that... Man, we have an example. Prepare. <laughs> I have an example. Prepare before, like it's it's okay to to you know mm-hmm. wander into that field, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing's off, you know, mm-hmm. off limits. <laughs> but if you're going to go that way, this mm-hmm. is like a personal pet peeve of mine. Mm-hmm. Prepare. Yeah. You know, it takes just as much as time to for you to down like to really get down your cadence if you're a rapper or like mm-hmm. your your fabric if you're a fashion designer or you know what I'm saying like yeah. it takes that much amount of time to get that one thing mm-hmm. and then if you want to venture off to something else you got to devote. But what's your definition of getting it? Like you know what I'm there saying? Is like no, there's no definition. There, there was no one day in my mind where I was like. I'm ready for the poetry. Like, right. I, but no, no, no. I'm saying like as far as like when you want to mix and match. It. So like, would you go up in a, in front of a crowd and start singing right now? Um, you know, if I was, if, <laughs> if, I, was, if I was, I might do a little. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I might never heard your voice before. If you, you never, hmm, and never heard your voice. Before. <laughs> Never checked it. Just went out there and just straight jumped out. But there. no, that's Would not you, what you're saying. No, no that's what you're saying. Oh, that's what I'm I thought you were saying they didn't really prepare. Like, hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, they just, they, <laughs> had, they had a little hum. Like, hmm. He just said, <laughs> this. you can be ready. You can be ready. You can be ready. And you can feel like, you know what I'm saying, this is what you want to do. But to call yourself that, that or to really be so profound mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. practice. What do you think about then... Some of these artists that release music and then they do poetry, but they are not poets. And there are a few, there are two that come to my mind, steaming in my mind, Tell who be I, like, I, I, I'm I, not going to say my names because you know, I need <laughs> you know, chat. We need chat. <laughs> but um, there are two that come to my mind. I mean, mm-hmm. who comes to you else? Like, you probably have more yeah, liberty yeah, than yeah, me, yeah, yeah. who may venture into poetry. But they're really rappers that are really. Right. But but rapper do you feel like they should stay to their language, you know? <sighs> Their form of language. If it's in music, they should say the music. But they'll say the same thing with poet when it's rap. You're a poet. You can be doing poetry. You shouldn't be rapping. Why are you, you rapping? Why are you rapping? Why are you singing? So why are you, you doing singing? anything? Are you doing poetry? Are you rapping? Like, right. It's kind of like, um, it's not a popularity race or it's not like a prison as you, so as yeah. you put it. But it's just, it's tough when there are certain things. Like if you enjoy, you know, playing a, one sport and you're really, really good at it, yeah. then you just stop and say, oh, now I want to play this sport. Mm-hmm. Do you just jump into that sport without practicing? You know, or do you just, you know, do you feel as though that you're that athletic that you could just be like, oh, I'm great at this. I'm the you greatest. You never know, though. I don't know. I've literally gotten on stages. I wrote a poem for the 1500 crowd. Okay. I wrote it in an Uber on the way there. And I, then I was like, you know, I'm just going to jot some notes down. 
of like what I want to say. I looked at that the whole time and then I went on there and was like, I know what I want to say. Mm. I don't necessarily know all the words mm. and then end up performing. But you still, you still had, you, you were still ready. You were preparing. Even if you weren't ready enough. You were preparing you were in still, the over. You were still ready to do something. Yeah. So it was, a, it was it, a level prep. It was a level preparation. It was a level. It was a smidge. It was a level preparation it was a smidge. before the actual performance. Yeah. yeah. I think I just was like Jesus. I just throw them up. Yeah. What she said, throw them up. Jesus. <laughs> I throw all of them up. You can catch too. Just get, just catch it. Yeah, that's work. That's work. I mean, what? Let's let's let's, let's get into the actual performance. Then let's see what's going on. Then who performing? You are. You want to. I need to hear 2019. 2019 will be here because it is. It's here. It's here right now. I'm right here. 2019 is a whole year. But no, ideally, so when we have a guest on our show, gotcha. We we ask them to just do like a snippet, little snippet, little snippet. snippet. You know, thirty seconds, like a sandwich bite, like 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 an IG snap, like an IG snap. You know what I'm saying? Just something. You know, maybe like a 30, 30, 30, 35 seconds, you know. It can't be that quick. Bye-bye. That's how quick it is? Mm. Well, not okay. that quick, but bye. Uh, Let it ricochet. Okay. What's up? What say you? What's the topic? It's on you. Mm. Y'all gotta set the stage. Give me a pal, then I'm a pal with you. Pal, okay, there pal. <laughs> Give me a pal. Come on, give me a pal. Give me a line. Other one. Cut. Yo, why did I mash it there? Where is that from? Why did I imagine that? Oh, man. All right, so let's just do, um, do a little bit of five fingers and set this up. And then, Jay. I'm so happy. Come on. Here we go. Five fingers? Five fingers. Five fingers. Five fingers. Five fingers. Five fingers. What that is? Uh, okay. That's this. Let's <laughs> fall, y'all. Yo, the table by the ball. Oh, man, where should we start from? Mm. I love it. Is this dream. new? Is this new? Yeah. No. Uh-uh, this you can't do no old poem. Then I'm doing the old poem. No, you said. Yep, that's, that's fine. fine. You can do anything. No, that's want. not fine. We just talked about language and creating a universal language. So you want freestyle? Yeah, I kind of want that. Okay, well start us off. No, you gotta, you gotta head us off. On the one. Come on. I, I think she confused about the, uh, the, the artist so, spotlight. She don't really understand. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, okay, I'm ready. Fine. Fine. I'm going to talk about. Come on, Come on, high seat. I'm never, my seat is never hot. It's warm. Ooh, cool to see cold. As she now talks trash. I am going to talk trash. Um, okay, cool. I'll snap it on. What? I want to snap it on. Okay, um. You show me the side of you that you hide from you. It's like you at the top of my mind and the tip of my tongue. And man, you feel like amazing grace. Like, oh, how sweet was the sound and the side that you made me make. It's like. When you look at me, you actually see me, and we begin to be lost in the deepest parts of each other, and it's just something about you. How we went from Kool-Aid to kisses and bus rides to back seats is crazy. The type of love that you and I share. It's our hidden language that will forever remain undeciphered. It's like pillow talk, but we ain't nigga knocking. Okay. <laughs> The jail speaks, everybody. Jail <laughs> speaks on the one. Okay. Huh. I um. Since that, I got a. Uh, this is something that I wrote before the close of the previous year. Okay, um, new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm I'm gonna pull up some of this stuff. Go ahead. Let's see. <laughs> no, I want this stuff. Come on now. All right. This sounds like jail wants a third mic on the table permanently. Right. She's already she's initi- to... she already has initiatives, you know. So <laughs> I be going shaking the table. For um, like, we about to get some sponsorship. Sponsor us. This is you know. 
Look at the stickers. Poor I like this stuff ain't free, okay, y'all? Yo. We giving y'all the realness. We establishing Yo. a whole platform for you, okay? Invite us. We speak to your kids. We speak to at the at work, you know. Poet life. It's a it's an expressive vision. It's a writing. Lord, Lord, We're writing Lord. poets, you know. Damn. Hey. Poet. You know, look, bring a poet to your city. You go like this, right? Why do schools seem like factories? Mm. Why is Earth the only planet with enough gravity to hold us down? She held you down, but you decided to leave. A great lapse in communication made it hard to breathe. No O2. Mm. You demanded, and she reprimanded. Poor planet. Mishandling explosives, the earth quivers, her heart shatters. Your hands painted red, her lips drip red too. Both take the blame because they both on the menu. Damage done during dinner time when you only want to whine. What makes a relationship stand the test of time? Why is being attractive different until it's discussed the masses? Why does attraction based upon its external features than mind and data? How would you evaluate the vision of the Spanish Inquisition in relationships to prison and dilapidated infrastructure? Mm, question, something to think about. Make the roll one out and, you know, drink about. Yeah. The clothes is open, bro. <laughs> the clothes is open, bro. We want to thank y'all for tuning in to another. <laughs> <laughs> On the one. <laughs> nah, man. Uh, there is no room for the lazy. No room for the excuse makers, no time wasters. This space is for the go getters. To do better and keep doing better, who have done away with depression and exchanged it for desire, who choose, who choose themselves over their former selves. These are the breakers of generational curses who write their purpose in cursive to eliminate the space mm -hmm. between their words and actions. Let us be them mm -hmm. before there's a fee for us to be them. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Like what you heard, man, you can find us on all platforms, streaming platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube. We have J.O. Speaks here once again. And she gave us a little quick plug, you know what I'm saying? Look, poor oh, night. We do everything. That's the jingle. But where can we find you? Oh, you can find me at JL Speaks, J A E L Speaks, on Instagram um, or on my website, which is jspeaks.org. How do they spell J A E S P E A K S dot org. So, this is your man, I'm J Y B, and I'm G. You now tuned in to the Paul Light Podcast. Hosted by none other than Nuance. Peace. Peace.